What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy AK Dog. We're back in standard here with an abs and party list, wrapping up our party week. But uh, first, I want to take a second to uh, highlight a uh, uh, cause that Wizards of the Coast is uh, uh, kind of sponsoring uh, this time of year. I believe they do it every year uh, for the uh, it's called the Trevor Project, and their uh, their goal is to uh, suicide prevention, specifically targeted at LGBTQ youth. So suicide prevention for the uh, you know young uh, LGBTQ uh, community is uh, pretty important, uh, especially you know pretty tough times these days. Lots of divisiveness, uh, especially here in the United States. But um, yeah, it's a good cause. Uh, so there'll be some relevant links posted in the description where you can go if you feel so inclined. You can make you know a small donation if you like. Uh, if you are you know fortunate to. Uh, not be terribly affected by all the things that are going on. Feel free to you know, donate a few bucks. You don't have to, of course. And they also have a link where you can uh, you know purchase magic uh, magic products, and uh, those funds will go directly towards uh, supporting uh, this great uh, cause. So they've actually sent me this shirt, pretty uh, pretty sweet, and also this uh, Planeswalker pin. Got the nice uh, Pride Rainbow logo uh, going on. And uh, when they first made us aware of these uh, of this. Uh, uh, this cause I actually went to the link and just found a pretty cool shirt I got for like 10 bucks super cheap and it was a really sweet uh, design so yeah go uh, check that out you know and you can get yourself some nice uh, new uh, magic swag and uh, support a good cause at the same time or you know just donate a few bucks to a good cause you know we're coming up on the holidays and times are gonna be tough for uh, a lot of people but uh, if, you, if you're you know in a position where you're fortunate enough to uh, you know have a few bucks to uh, to uh, uh, share to help people out that are uh, struggling then you know it's uh, certainly one cause you could direct that to. All right, that's enough of that. So, Abzan Party. So, we still had a couple more party decks uh, to work on, but just wanted to get all these out, uh, these main, kind of the main ones that I've been focusing on uh, <clears throat> this week, and we'll be kind of sprinkling those in over the next uh, coming days. But Abzan, I know you guys like uh, Abzan. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Abzan as well. So, Abzan Party. We got uh, two Blood Chief Surfs, just good removal. Uh, we got some other things here as well, so that's why just two copies. Three Luminarch Aspirant gives us a nice uh, cleric here, very powerful. One one, of course, it puts a one one counter on a creature you control, being of combat. Two copies of Acquisitions Expert, two mana one two Rogue. Let's just look at our opponent's hand. Well, anywhere from one to four cards at least, and we get to choose one to make your opponent discard that card. Uh, three copies of No Priest of Oblivion, just one of my uh, favorite cards from the Zendikar set. I feel like it's in pretty much every deck uh, that I run. It is black. It just uh, so versatile. Does a little bit of everything for you, really. Uh, you know, 2 mana, 2-1, two, mana Slife Lincoln Cleric, pretty solid right there. And uh, of course you can kick it to get a creature back straight to the battlefield from your graveyard. And uh, Tajuru Paragon, big fan of this card. Uh, <clears throat> you know, any, any, any party deck that's running green definitely wants to run uh, probably 4 copies of uh, this. Just 2-mana, uh, 3-2, two three, two. it's already pretty good right there. It's got Kicker where you can, uh, you know, dig for a creature, car uh, a creature from your party, uh, party type. <clears throat> Uh, six cards into your library. You have to choose uh, any of those. Uh, and then it fleshes out the rest of your party. So, you know, sometimes the putting the party together can be a little bit hard. You know, your draws aren't kind. Sometimes one party uh, type is a little bit weak. So you're running just kind of the bare minimum. Well, Tiju Paragon just kind of fills in that gap and just gives you a solid body with uh, late game upside as well. I mean, it does a little bit of everything. It's really fantastic. <clears throat> Even though we have the Paragon, we're also running two Stonework Pack Bees. Just like need a little bit more. Um, ways to kind of flesh out the party because some of our uh, uh, in Abzan color some of the uh, uh, you know creature types aren't really fantastic options so pack beast just as a two of to kind of flesh out the uh, party along with our paragon just makes it so that we can try to hit our party uh, as much as uh, often as we can and even in a three color deck the pack beast is not terrible because you know we can fix our mana a little bit expensive paying the two two to get one mana of any color is not really a great rate but uh, it has come in handy once or twice so it actually isn't terrible and since we're in abzan we got my favorite removal spell in standard mythos of nethroi three mana instant speed if you use abzan colors you can destroy any non-land permanent just fantastic uh four copies of nighthawk scavenger you know, we're in this Abzan <clears throat> color, so we need to, uh, you know, we need kind of removal and death touch and things like that to kind of give us uh, advantage wherever we can. So Nighthouse Scavenger kind of fills a little bit of everything. 
uh, flying death touch life link three mana one plus three so it's always gonna be at least a one three then it gets uh, you know additional power for the number of different card types in your opponent's graveyard so you know your opponents can be cracking field passages they're gonna be cast and instance sorceries uh, you know they're gonna maybe have some sagas that are gonna fill up their graveyard for the enchantments and things like that we have we have some good removal here with mythos and that's able to destroy anything so not like scavenger we don't have to you know like do mill you know like you typically see like the rogue decks uh, you don't have to actively mill our opponent to actually get a value off the scavenger. Uh, two broken wings. Obviously, we have the mythos of Nethroid, which kind of answers everything. Blood Chief Search, which is pretty versatile, being able to kill any creature or planeswalker. Well, broken wings just gives us a little bit more um, kind of versatility removal here. Uh, being able to destroy artifacts, enchantments, or creatures with flying at instant speed. Squad Commander, one of the better. Uh, party payoffs here four mana three three warrior that makes a one one token for each creature in your party so it's a warrior so it'll always make at least a one one so it's not <clears throat> not terrible and you can make up to four uh, tokens with this and if you have a full party you could just get plus one plus zero indestructible until end of turn so that's pretty fantastic that's why we need the paragon and the pack beast to kind of make sure we can flesh that out as consistently as possible so have Rankle, obviously another one of the better rogues who can be playing here. Three mana or four mana, three three flying haste, uh, makes our uh, players discard, draw cards, or sack creatures depending on uh, the board state and matchup. And finally, here we got <coughs> four cobs of Jiraga Visionary. Uh, you know the wizards are pretty lacking here in Abzan colors, that's why we're running the Paragon and Pack Beast. But uh, you know Visionary, it's a th four mana three two, which isn't really great, but you know three power isn't terrible and it does draw you a card, which can be important. You know we're trying to uh, play lots of removal and kind of grind out our opponents and sometimes we just kind of need ways to kind of dig out uh dig through our library and visionary kind of helps out we don't have card draw otherwise so visionary is kind of a, a decent feeling mana base here kept it, kept it pretty simple two plane two swamp two forest four uh bright climb pathway four branch loft pathway all four of the triomes <coughs> and then two of each of the temples plenty uh, Malady and Silence. Uh, just trying to have as much fixing as we can, but without having too many tap lands. So we've got a total of uh, 10 tap lands. Of course, once we do flood, uh, have enough lands and we start to flood out, we can always cycle the Triome later on and uh, things like that. And so we have card advantage in the form of Rankle and Draga Visionary as well. Sideboard here, we got Drain uh, Chain Web Arachnir to help us out with like kind of mill and rogue type strategies. Janeth Magistrate to shut down. Uh, escape and uh adventure and also a wizard as well two more acquisitions expert for those kind of mid-range and control type matchups two eliminates for the rogue and other kind of low to the ground aggro matchups elspeth's nightmare also works well in the rogue matchup uh as it lets us destroy one of their creatures and look at our opponent's hand and just uh have them discard any non-creature non-land permanent then we get to exile their graveyard as well it also works great against like rakdos mid-range uh, Necromantra can be very powerful against Ugin or any sort of a linear type strategy like that. Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis also works great against the mill strategy, so she pumps up the team. And uh, just escapes for at the price of four other cards from our graveyard and six mana. It's not terrible. Also makes tokens, so to kind of help you rebuild, rebuild your board state can be uh, can be relevant as well. Uh, Mangara can come in uh, against kind of a more aggressive matchups. <coughs> Say Cleric, of course. Four mana, two, four, lifelinky. And uh, whenever uh, your opponent attacks with two or more creatures, you get to draw a card. And whenever your opponent casts their second spell, each turn, draw a card. So, can be pretty matchup dependent, very niche card. It can be nice at times, but even in those matchups, sometimes it feels a little bit medium. So that's why I just won in the sideboard, but sometimes it feels pretty pretty reasonable. One extinction event for the, uh, you know, Scoot Swarm, another sort of go wide uh, type strategies. We can kind of, uh, you know, play, play around this based on, you know, since we're very creature heavy, we can, you know, kind of play around this a little bit. With uh, what creatures we play, or just kind of hold back sometimes. Throw the grave gives another way to kind of play around, uh, you know, the mill strategies and other removal heavy matchups. Even as we get to uh, get a <clears throat> uh, two creatures back from the graveyard straight to the battle. All right, begins it. Dragon Lord. Right, we got the scry here. A couple of playables. So we'll give it a try. Silence, give me a land. Mythos is nice, but not even playable based on what we have currently, so we'll bottom that. Island. Usually, the people who say hello are uh, invariably trolls. Some people are definitely friendly, but in my experience, most people will say hello are 
Not very nice, typically. But we'll see. Maybe they're one of the actual friendly ones. Teamer draw. Joel Royale. That's something we can uh, thirst. And yeah, we finally found a land, so awesome. Yeah, we'll take a uh, fourth land. Right, so they have one counter on their seas, now two. So they need eight counters in total. So we got a couple of turns before they can make eight eight tokens. Empathy, perfect. Uh, I think we just rank layer, put the put the beats on them. Try to really speed up our clock. Yeah, I think we'll say no. Don't want them drawing cards based on what their deck is trying to do. And we have three cards in hand. Could, could have gone discard, but kind of like what we have right now. Oh, they uh, play Fairy Vandal at Sorcery Speed. You gotta love that. Okay, so they can Omen of the Sea and get some card advantage going. Makes sense. So let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven. We're hitting for lethal unless they have a uh, one mana way to deal with our board here. We're going to go for the kill. Now we have exactly lethal. Okay, so teamer draw two. So they have fairy vandal. That was the only actual creature we saw. Oh, Joriel, of course. Uh, yeah. So Blood Chief seems pretty solid still. Um... Alright, so we got four warrior, four wizard, six cleric, eight rogue. It's definitely impossible they can shut down our rankle with uh, you know, smaller creatures, so I think Mangara should be pretty good here since they're trying to uh, you know, cast a bunch of spells, maybe go wide. Uh, multiple threats with the Omnisies, Joriel, things like that, so I'm not sure Necromancer quite cuts it. Does Expert even make sense? I find, find like against the uh, decks that have lots of card draw, uh, Hand Hate doesn't really do a whole lot because they're just able to recover so quickly from any any sort of disruption you might have. Uh, this can deal with you know, Joriel's, but this feels pretty limited. I don't think we were worried about anything in their graveyard. Maybe extinction events, if they're able to kind of, uh, you know, flood the board with some kind of tokens. But we didn't see the Improbable Alliance, but I'm assuming they have a couple copies in there. But even then, that card's pretty limited because you only get to make one token based on the... Literally has to be your second. It's not second or more. So... I think we're okay. Down to five. That's unfortunate. Trium. Okay, untap land. Perfect. So temple. Let's find me something not a land. Do we want our third Nighthawk Scavenger? I think we'll bottom that. Just dig for something else. Try to flesh out our party. We got cleric. We got rogue. So they do have the improbable alliance. Well, we got a squad commander. Uh, yeah, no priest. Come on down. So we got black, black. Okay, so we can probably play this on white and this on green, and we'll have uh, pretty solid fixing. Uh, Iron Crag is definitely a problem. Iron Crag Pyromancer is definitely a problem. Uh, the uh, Improbable Alliance is annoying, but the Pyromancer can pick off most of our creatures, so it's three, three damage to any target. Yep, so that's going to kill all of our stuff. Right, Fairy Vandal, and last card, Glimpse of Freedom. So you have to draw a card. Make a 1-1, one, one, make a token. Well, we have some options here. Let me just go Squad Commander, and if we draw an untapped land, we can Scavenger plus Pack Beast. Obviously they have easy blocks on our Null Priest now, even though it has Menace. 
I could block both and we'd kill the token. Doesn't seem worth it. Ooh, lore scale code. Well, that's a spicy one. So they're uh, setting a pretty nice board state, but we're, uh, if we can dodge some removal, we're in a pretty good spot here. We just need to flesh out our party here. Another squad commander. I mean, squad commander is good, but we need something else. I guess we just play it and still just hope for untapped land. Although maybe, uh, maybe just getting our uh, party down is better instead of hoping for that fifth untapped land to do both. I mean, technically this commander is more mana efficient, but I mean, now that we have two on board, once we get our uh, our situation settled, we're gonna be able to crash in for tons of damage. Alright, they're uh, starting to build up a pretty scary board state, so let's drop the scavenger now. I can say no attacks, and we'll just drop Pack Beast, and then we'll have our full party. Rogue, Warrior, Cleric, and this can be a uh, Wizard. Omen of the Sea. So our opponent has recovered nicely from a uh, from a mulligan to, was it, five, I believe? I mean, that's what these uh, <clears throat> draw-heavy decks are certainly capable of. Glimpse of Freedom is a nice uh, card you don't often see. Especially makes sense with the uh, escape uh, to kind of uh, anti anti rogue tech. Uh, eliminates pretty good. We can deal with the Kodal or the Fairy Vandal. So I think we'll just play Pack Beast, get our uh, get our squad full up, and then we hold up eliminate. And there's still a ways from lethal, so I think we I think we got this. We get double triggers here, so plus one, plus zero twice, so plus two, plus zero, and twice is indestructible. Plus two of our creatures have a lifelink, so I think we're uh, looking pretty good here. Our opponents, uh, we're going to have to find some way to deal with our uh, our board, but pretty much any removal though takes us off of it. They can kill the Pack Beast, the Null Priest... So we're gaining 11 here. Yeah, that's going to give us so much breathing rooms, even if they do find uh, some. The, the Kind of the downside is uh, with these draw two decks is it's like you only have so much removal because you need to play the, you know, the Vandal, the Kotal, Jor'El, the Improbable Alliance, these draw cards, the Omen, the Glimpse. Like, it doesn't really leave a whole, whole lot of room for interaction. So you're just trying to kind of go wide and hope that's good enough. Uh, we got Indestructible, my dude, so you don't want to double block there. Blocking the smaller things. Uh, I would, I would block the Kotal block something bigger. Yeah, there you go. And then probably throw a token in front of the squad commander here. Soak up ten damage. Uh, yeah, I mean all of my stuff is indestructible. Hopefully they factor that in. I right, get them down to six, and they lose. Quite a bit of their board state. We're at 33. They can't even attack into us, really. So we basically just uh, kill them this turn, unless they're somehow able to do something uh, impressive. <clears throat> Not sure what that would be. I guess a Storm's Wrath. Yeah, Storm's Wrath to wipe out our whole board. That could make sense as a uh, bit of sideboard tech for them. Just kind of slow roll your threats. Maybe uh, put a bunch of counters to go over. Uh, get above a Storm's Wrath, and then just kind of wipe out your opponent's board if they're doing something like this. But. So they're just uh, going to go for the Suicide Attack here for 5. Um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to squad up and swing all up. I can't imagine there's anything we, they, do, they can do here. One mana, they don't have any... Uh, there aren't any fog effects in standard, are there? I don't believe so. I know there have been so many... Re there were multiple ones recently. But as of now, I don't believe there are any. Maybe, there, maybe there's one that I'm just not thinking of because nobody plays it. There's no real archetypes. No reason to use any removal, rub it in. We'll just go to attacks and just uh, let them block where they fill. Whew. 
All right, so we got there against the Teamer, draw two. All right, against Phantom, 117. Uh, we have a bunch of two drops here and two lands with all of our colors, so we'll keep it. Hopefully they play a creature and then we can, uh, you know, Blood Chief's Thirst while we play our second Triome. Or we'll, we'll just draw untapped land, that would work too. No. I think we still try them. Could try to scry into untapped land, but showing forest, I'm sure they'll give us something to kill this turn. No, tap land for them. Okay, another tap land for us. Um, in that case, we'll just Temple of Silence. If we keep trying lands, then we'll just hold open. Uh, I guess it does give us a wizard for our party, since we have pretty much everything else. Although we have Pack Beast as well. Okay, some kind of a gruel ramp package, maybe? So if they do find a play a creature, we have the Null Boost with, uh, with uh, Menace. Uh, we'll bottom that. We'll just play Trial, I guess, next turn. Scavenger Trial, maybe? Unless they give us something to uh, kill. No, they're just gonna ramp away. Three cards in hand still. Scorching Dragonfire. So what is your, what is the point of your deck? Just ramp into big stuff. So we got Rankle, or Visionary, or Luminarch and Pack Beast next turn. Ooh, Moral. Probably not something we want our opponent to have. And the problem with their deck, they did Mulligan, so we don't really know what they're up to, but if you just literally do nothing until the end game and then try to play a Morog, then like we're just sitting here with all this removal in hand, so when you finally play a creature, then boom, we can just fire it off. No problem. Uh, we got Rankle next turn. Yeah, I think I'm fine with just playing these guys out. I bet you they don't have ways to deal with Flyers. Don't need second rankle, I don't think. They could have a dragon fire. We'll put our scavenger out of dragon fire range, though. We have to have something, something else like a thin rebuke, or uh, maybe a beanstalk giant with a fight effect. <coughs> There's an eight-eight beanstalk giant. We're up to twenty-eight, though. But we don't have good attacks on the ground. I have two men open thanks to carry, carry at it. have the removal. Yep, Paragon 2, but I think we just go for right Rankle. Maybe it's not right. We have a Dragonfire? No, nope, they don't. Perfect. Oh, Return of Nature. That's what you were holding? That's what you were holding? Man, Return of Nature main deck. When you have things like Broken Wings? Uh, nah. Good sacrifice. They just sacrificed their carry I did. Which is kind of in uh, inconsequential at this point. Yeah. So we got you in the air. So return to nature when you have access to broken wings. That's interesting. Alright, so opponent's trying to ramp. So they have, uh... You know, the beanstalk giants. We can assume they have other adventure... What we bone crusher giant? I mean you can certainly make a case to put that in any uh, any gruel deck. No matter what it's trying to do. And slow down the ramp with eliminates. Do we see anything else? Beanstalk plus karyatid plus morog. Could try to necromentia one of their things. Uh this anything to broken wings. So we can take that out. You bring in the Necromentia and Extinction Event, in case they are able to kind of go wide this time. Just in case, that was kind of a panic button. Especially on the uh, draw. But maybe on the play next turn where you can sub out the Extinction Event for uh, Megara. We'll see. It's a pretty solid hand here. Temple. Scry, I'll probably, you know, we got 
few looks at a fourth land here. Another aspirin. It's pretty schmexy. Like a land, not ideal, but let's see. Still play this on black, have a double black for our uh, wrinkle. Got a no priest since they don't probably don't have too many creatures. <clears throat> yep, just gonna ramp with the cultivate, so now we can get the uh, menace attack in here for two. Oh, they didn't attack, that's curious. Nighthawk Scavenger is interesting. So obviously we need any second black source. I think we just go for the Scavenger here. Get our lifelink uh, online earlier, especially with the air and the menace now. And we got options next turn. We got uh, double aspirant. Ooh, Elder Gargoth. That's, that's dangerous. Oh, Mythos of Netheroy. Wow. That was clutch. Elder Gargoth is such a problem. Uh, green is kind of our splash, so we'll just play this on white. But yeah, we need to deal with this uh, Gargoth. We could just swing into it and make him, uh, you know, block. And the Death Touch would kill it, let that kind of deal with it. But they're still getting value with the card draw or whatever. Okay, they're going to Beanstalk Giant. I think they had mana to just play it, but I guess they wanted the land first. Not sure that's correct. You don't have to use the uh, land part of Beanstalk Giants. You don't have to. I mean, we're in a pretty commanding spot, so we're going to drop these Aspirins, and we're going to pump our creatures already on board. Could make a case to just put both of them on the uh, Nighthawk, since they're going to get a creature down next turn, but... We're also kind of uh, flooding the board here pretty hard. Morog. Uh, Morog is something to use when you're kind of ready to go a little bit more aggressive. I mean, we have lethal here. Yeah. Because uh, this has to be double block. This is swinging in the air. And then even if they had single blocks on these, we still just have that extra point of damage getting through for six. So, yeah. All right, that was pretty good. Let's go over the list one more time here. <clears throat> All right, even got a little card. Oh, Mythic, Forsaken Monument. Starting to see more play, especially in the Historic. Haven't really been brewing with uh, Historic. I've gotten quite a few uh, the Kaladesh cards. But I uh, just haven't really been all that interested in looking in Historic too closely yet. But we'll, we'll get there eventually. But if there is something you guys want to see me brew around, uh, certainly let me know. I'll be happy to uh, you know, take a look at some Historic options, which we're going to get around to eventually. But still pretty focused on Standard. I feel like there's still a lot of interesting things that can be done um, in Standard, such as the party. Um, obviously, a lot of these party decks are still pretty uh, mediocre as far as competitive level. Uh, a lot of them are fun to play. Uh, definitely I've enjoyed kind of uh, fleshing these uh, different options out and kind of uh, you know building around them. Obviously, we have D&D uh, &D coming out in two sets from now, so we're going to continue to get support, I would assume, in call time. So, you know, having an understanding for what the different uh, party decks are capable of and kind of where kind of where they're at and uh, kind of comparing that to what cards we get in the coming sets is going to be pretty important because, uh, you know, party is going to be... I, I would assume it's going to be pretty pushed for D&D because D&D is, is, of course a uh, very um, uh, important part of the Hasbro and Wizards brand, so they're going to definitely want to make sure that set is uh, you know, powerful and sells and that people take notice of it. Um, and obviously Party, which is something that people were speculating, was going to be a big thing. Uh, seems, seems pretty clear since they're already starting to kind of give us these Party things, although some are pretty watered down, like Base Camp, like coming in tapped, it's pretty, pretty brutal. But there's a lot of other things that go really well. Obviously, rogues have been the prime beneficiary of uh, the party so far. But I would assume we'll get more rogue support uh, as well. That will obviously do different things beyond just the demure tempo list that we we're seeing constantly. Uh, so it'll be kind of fun to kind of have rogues as maybe some different you know options uh, other than just you know tempo, maybe more you know mid rangey or ag just low to ground, just 
traditional aggro style list as well. So yeah, it'd be fun to kind of play around with some of the different uh, things that we can do with the party theme. And I'm sure we'll get some like busted, like, you know, dedicated party cards as well. But uh, yeah, for now, it's wrapping up uh, party week. Like I said, we'd have a couple more party decks that I'm going to be uh, uh, doing, but I'm going to kind of sprinkle those in so it's not, you know, just party all the time. So yeah, Abzan, uh, you know, get, we're trying to le lean into what these colors kind of represent, and obviously Abzan has versatile removal. We got the Mythos of Nethroi, just kind of a perfect example. So I have to, had to run all four copies here in, uh, uh, in the deck, of course. We got Broken Wings, pretty versatile removal spell. Blood Chief Sirs, pretty powerful removal spell. And then um, just trying to take advantage of all that removal by giving us ways to kind of be aggressive with the Aspirant. Uh, no Priest, Tiju Paragon, just a 3-2 beater for 2 mana. Pretty fantastic. Uh, scavenger in the air. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of decks that have good ways to deal with flyers other than just, you know, your basic removal spells. Um, like, there's not a whole lot of flying outside of the rogue rogue builds. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the Squad Commander with the, uh, you know, a little bit of hand disruption with the Acquisitions Expert, and then once we get our, uh, you know, our team down, we've got the Squad Commander to kind of and get through and close out some games. Uh, Rankle, pretty nice uh, value creature here as well. And then Visionary kind of gives us our wizard. Since we don't have too many good options, we have the Magistrate, but I feel like it's more of a sideboard card. Just a 2-mana 1-3 isn't really anything super great, but when you do need to shut down, you know, the escape and uh, adventure builds, it's pretty powerful. Um, yeah, sideboard could definitely be, you know, tweaked a little bit, but this feels pretty reasonable overall uh, to me. You know, we try to want to emphasize removal wherever we can. We'd have some kind of control elements here with, like, Necromentia and things like that. The Elspeth's Nightmare. You need some kind of graveyard interaction. Um, don't like the ooze because green is kind of our splash color, so it would be kind of hard to play the ooze and then have green men open to, you know, activate it. You know, Timura is okay as well, but we don't have a ton of devotion and, uh, you know, two mana to activate its ability. It's a little bit expensive as well. So Elspeth's Nightmare seems like it's in a pretty good spot overall in the format right now. It does give you a way to kind of just... Uh, one time, one time, one shot at your opponent's graveyard. So it feels pretty good. Um, obviously, you need some ways to kind of deal with like the the mill stuff. You need some, some escapes. We got the chain web. We got the Elspeth. Those are pretty solid uh, tech cards. Swarth the grave even is pretty it's pretty solid. Definitely got some value off this uh, here and there. And then got a little panic button with extinction event. I don't, th I don't think we were going on the shadow of the sky or anything like that. I think it's just extinction event because we can still kind of play some some of our creatures. Uh, depending on what our opponent is up to, and then we can just kind of exile uh, everything else and kind of keep our important creatures alive. So, it seems to be just a little bit easier to play around than just Shadow of the Sky, I would say. And we have enough we have enough spot removal that we don't really need uh, anything like that. So, having exile removal is actually a little bit more uh, important, I would say. So, yeah, this is the Abzan party deck. So, hopefully, you guys are. Uh, are uh, partied out, but we do have a couple more ones coming out, like I said, and if you guys uh, have any suggestions for this deck or any other decks you want to see me build, let me know. Otherwise, until next time, make sure you uh, jank with uh, Purp.